let's look at the slide where elementary particles make up atoms, make up, make up molecules, make up the cells, make up the brain, and the brain makes up consciousness, which is the common idea of what consciousness is. This is the idea of the scientist's idea. It has become so prevalent that most people now think that consciousness is a brain phenomenon. In quantum physics, if you use this argument, you get paradox. It's very easy to see. This sounds okay in the language that we have used it, but now bring in the quantum language. Possible elementary particles make a possible atom, make a possible molecules, make possible neurons, makes possible brain, makes possible consciousness. Possible consciousness, look at a possible electron. Will that get you actuality? What is your experience? We, in our normal ways of hallucination, imagine possible money in the bank all the time, and possible money in the bank buying a possible house, possible car all the time, but never we get, never do we get an actual car, actual house that way. Nobody has and nobody ever will. That's just common sense, right? Now, physics, of course, cannot depend on common sense. So John von Neumann, a great mathematician, he proved this mathematically. He said that if we stay within a science of quantum physics, which is the established mathematical equation of science behind all elementary objects, if we stick to that, then there is no way that any material interaction will ever transform wave of possibility into actuality. Material interactions are incapable of, incapable of converting waves of possibility into actual particles of experience. Quantum physics solves these problems. So first, let me talk a little bit about quantum physics and what is so new in quantum physics. The first thing that happens with quantum physics is that consciousness enters physics. Consciousness, non-material, and it is consciousness that collapses the possibility waves into a particle of actuality. Consciousness that collapses the many possible facets into one possible facet that is chosen by consciousness. So we have, we have this idea, consciousness then is the ground of all being. Consciousness is the ground of all being in which if matter consists of just possibility and consciousness chooses out of these possible facets, the one facet that becomes actualized, then we have an explanation, a resolution of both paradoxes. We don't suffer from the materialist paradox. Consciousness as a brain phenomena is possibility acting on possibility. That can never collapse possibility into actuality because all we have is material interactions. Consciousness does matter, not the other way around. Consciousness does matter. Matter is secondary. Consciousness is primary. Brain does not do consciousness. Consciousness does the brain in such a way that it identifies with the brain and looks upon itself as a subject experiencing the object that it collapsed. 